Today, I'm gonna to show you the ultimate upgrade for your AMS light system. One of the main differences between the AMS light system and the AMS system is the AMS light system is not enclosed whatsoever. It's just out in the open, in the air, ready to absorb all the water it can. Now for me, this isn't much of a problem because I live in Arizona, which is one of the hottest deserts in the country, and our average humidity is below 20% over the year. However, if you live in a more humid environment, this could be a huge issue for you with your filaments absorbing all the water that they can. Now this may not sound like a big issue, but moist filament can cause all sorts of build plate adhesion problems, layer shifting issues, bubbling in the filament, and that's just for PLA and PETG. If you get into TPU, keeping the water out is an absolute must. At the moment, Bamboo Labs does not offer a solution to this problem, however, with 3D printing comes many people that like to solve problems. Enter SuperGrapher. On the Bamboo Labs Maker World, SuperGrapher released the ultimate filament spool enclosure for AMS Lite in June of 2024, and we're gonna see if this upgrade can really keep the humidity out. This brilliant design allows you to fully enclose your AMS Lite system, as well as use a hygro, hygrometer, hydro, hygro, the thing that measures humidity to keep track of how much water is actually inside your AMS light system. This also incorporates the use of desiccants to lower the humidity inside of the system. The designer profile unfortunately cannot be printed on the actual A1 Mini itself, and before you click away, there is another profile designed for the A1 Mini that will only take an additional two hours to print. However, I have not tested that one myself. If you decide to print the designer print profile, it will take you a little bit over 16 hours and eight plates on one of the bigger Bamboo Lab printers, such as the P1S, which is what I use, or the X1 Carbon, or even the A1 standard size. If you'd like to print the designer profile and you don't have a big enough printer to do so, there are some awesome resources such as PCBWay, which is the sponsor of today's video. PCBWay is not only known for creating their custom PCBs, they are also very well known for their CNC and 3D printing services. If you have a 3D printer that either cannot print certain materials or doesn't have a large enough build volume, you can head over to PCBWay, upload your file, and you can pick from all sorts of different materials such as resin, nylon, PLA, ABS, pick your quantity, the size of your STL. You can see your subtotal here as well as how long it will take to get your item. You can submit your request. I just think this is an amazing service and I'm very honored to be sponsored by PCBWay in today's video. With all the information out of the way, I wanted to make it clear that this is not going to be a tutorial video. It's going to be my experience assembling this build and what I think about it. Now, I'm sure you'll be able to follow my steps along the way, but this is not going to be structured like a tutorial. Just want to put that out there. Hey, I'm trying to hit 5,000 subscribers. Click the button. If you print everything in the print profile, you will come out with all of these pieces right here. Now, almost all of this is printed in this clear PLA by Elgu, which I will link down below, and that is printed in PETG, which are all the clips that hold it together, and that is what the designer recommends. Now, before we get to assembling this thing, I feel like it's only right to go over all the pieces that you're gonna be printing out. Plate one and plate two, which both take three and a half hours, are gonna be these buckets right here. Plate three and plate four are gonna take 1.6 hours and are these covers right here. Plate five is going to take 1.8 hours. However, I printed all three of the action panels. You only need to pick one. So your options are an inside and an outside hygrometer. No hygrometer, hydrometer, high, whatever you wanna say. And just an inside one. Plate six, again, will require you to only print one of these. And these are your desiccant holders. This one will hold the beads. And this one will hold the packets. Plate seven is gonna be all of your brackets to install this, which is only three. And finally, plate eight is going to take 1.6 hours and it's recommended to be printed in PETG because it is all of your clips. Now, I am not entirely sure. If you need to keep them all together like this, I guess we will find out. To get some more room, I did remove the Bowden tubes using this cool little tool right here, which you can go check out in a video right up there. We'll be following the instruction assemblies that are on the Maker World file itself, and I'm realizing now that clear filament was just not the best for on-camera use. So it looks like you do break those clips off of the one piece that's holding them together, and we're gonna combine those as well as this bracket right here to combine these two. Now I'm gonna provide all the pictures that are in the file just so you kind of have a reference of what I'm doing. Let's try, or does it go in the center? Looks like it goes in between both of them actually. And then we're gonna take these bigger uh, clamps here and clamp 
all three of these pieces together. Now, if I'm wondering, I don't know if you need to slide these on or snap them in place. Oh, there you go. I'm gonna be taking all of these clips and kind of just placing them on. So one goes there, down here. And I believe that is it. Next, I believe we are installing all of these other clips here. Now they kind of just slide into this bracket and you just pinch it a little bit and it fits nicely in there. All right, on the inside here, there's gonna be four holes and we are going to put these inside of them. Now, according to the pictures and the instructions, they just press fit in there. So not much pressure, just like that, I think. And it looks like it goes circle and then a square and then a square in this corner down here. Finally, a circle right here. So upon further research and uh, me being stupid, you need to take off the rolls of filament as well as the actual, whatever you want to call these things as well. And they just come off with a nice tug like that. Now, now we can install this thing the correct way. Don't be silly like me, just do it right the first time. And now we can take our spool holders, put those back on, maybe. There we go. That makes so much more sense. Now we're gonna work on the lids here, which again, here are the two lids. And here is the action panel, and I chose the one that will hold two of the meters. So I'm just gonna put that together. Now this is gonna hold together just like the bins did except we're gonna be using these other clips here. And these again have a very nice, satisfying clasp to them. And now this is all together and it's time to put in our sensors. Here are the sensors right here. This is the exact one with the link on the profile. Now, this is actually kind of ironic because I just said how dry it is in Arizona. However, it decided to rain today, so this is exactly why we need this right here. 49% unacceptable. Now it looks like we can just pop these into place here. Oh, we got a friend. There he goes. In the instructions, it says to slowly work around the edges and it will pop in. Wow. Almost like this guy knows what he's doing. Or girl. I don't know who made this. There it is. Now we have both of them in. And this, uh, this dual design here is awesome because you'll be able to compare your ambient humidity with the humidity inside of your actual chambers here. And you can see this one right here is gonna read the humidity inside your chambers and this one is gonna read the humidity inside the normal outside air. Now what good is this thing gonna do without any desiccants? We're gonna install our desiccant holder right there. Really big install. Um, but first, I'm gonna place my packets in here. So I'm just using these packets that I got off of Amazon. And we'll see how they fit in here. Hopefully they're not too big. Looks like they should be just perfect. So it looks like these Deskin packets are actually gonna be too big because they hit where the filament needs to go. So, now I do not recommend doing this. However, I rip that open. Throw them into the other loose desiccant holder that also comes with the print profile. And now that we're using this, we can also use the lid that is in the print profile as well. Now I'm gonna slide this in here, just like so, and we're gonna try to load our filament again. So it looks like that these plugs are actually on the wrong side. So this is a stopper, which stops the air from getting in. And the circular one allows the filament to actually go through into this top part here. Now I need to switch these around, so I'm gonna do that next. Now we have both of our filament rolls installed in there. We have our desiccants all ready to go. All that's left 
put on our cover. It looks like some of these clips were upside down and you can tell because they just don't go down all the way. Simple solution. Take them out, flip them over. Good to go. So I literally just put this on and you can already see the numbers dropping. We're down 3% so far and it's been about 30 seconds since I put this uh, top lid on there. I went ahead and let it sit overnight and you can see we're down to 22% in the chambers. That is absolutely amazing. I also went ahead and printed the buckets for the other side. So if you want to enclose the full AMS system, you will need to print four buckets, basically double of everything. However, it's no big deal. Exact same thing as the front side and I used the one sensor on the other side and I love it. It looks amazing. And that's all I have for you guys. I really do believe that this is the ultimate upgrade for your AMS light system. Going to keep that humidity down, going to keep that print quality up, you know what I'm saying? Everything is linked down below, obviously all of the Maker World files and the original creator all in that description down there, as well as all of the filaments that I used, some chapters, some other cool things. And just let me know if you have any questions about this system right here, this setup, and I'll answer them to the best of my abilities. And thank you so much for watching and Go check out some of my other videos.